Welcome back to Shoulder Challenge Month. We're on week two, day 14. Today is the second week of assessment day. So what that means is we want to look at the first videos that we took of the shoulder workspace and scapular workspace. We want to go back through and compare that to today, making sure that we go through the biggest range of motion possible on all angles. And I'll go over a few of the angles that we want to monitor to check for the assessment portion. Now, what I did is took screenshots on the areas and then compared them today so you have a better idea. I did this all on the Mac, so if you have to go through, that's how you do it. All right, so this is when we start raising our arm up by our head. I'm looking at the space between the arm and the head from day one to current. It's just fine. I'm not too concerned with that one. All right. Now, as we go through and the arm comes from the head and then starts to rotate back around, I look for where can we start to rotate or where do we have to rotate our arm coming backwards. So with the top one, left arm, we start rotating about 45 degree angle or so. However, compared to when we first started, we had to rotate much sooner, which is telling me the back upper side of the capsule, we're starting to get a little bit more movement and range of motion there. Beautiful. Now going back to the right arm, I look at angle, arms, very relatively similar, but however, I have to force hiking of the shoulder up more so than current. So we're getting a little bit more range of motion in the upper back, back portion of the arm as well. And we're breaking apart that tension from the neck to the shoulder, which is perfect. So really, really good results on that one. Now, as the arm comes back all the way around, we end with the thumb facing backwards, and then we start to come back. Once we start coming back, we have to see where the arm, thumbs, has to start rotating as we come back and bring the arm around upwards and to the front side. So, where is that in relatively from the wrist to the body? As you can see, left arm improved, right arm improved. Awesome. Really, really good there as well. Now, for scapular workspace, there's when we look at this from the side view, side view, we want to see how high up we can go, how high, how low can we go, how back can we go, also forward, but forward, there's some rounding of the torso. So, looking at that, left arm, right arm, elevator elevated relative to the ear especially compared to the first day that's a huge improvement all around so that's exciting as well now how far back can the shoulder blades go now looking at both of the current ones I look at the ear relative to the whole torso and hip same thing current torso hip Ear, torso, hip, and same thing. So there is a little bit of jutting in the head. However, way more range of motion backwards for both sides. So I'd say improvement as well, but just something to monitor. And then how low can we go with our scapula, our shoulder blade? So I look at the seams of the shirt or the top of the shoulder as at the lowest point making a line and putting that relative to the ear. Both sides on the left side, very similar. Right side, a little worse if I'm going to nitpick that, but honestly, I'm not too concerned with that. So just something that I need to monitor moving forward. Okay, so Let's open this up a little bit more here. Now, sleeping positions, especially for the shoulder. If you sleep on your side, pay attention to a few things. First off, what is the height of the pillow and how is your head tilted on your neck or on your spine? So if you have a thinner pillow, are we tilted downwards? If so, are we jamming on the top base of the neck or do we have a thicker pillow and is our head coming off a little bit more 
and is it tilting your head opposite way? Okay, so that's one thing. We want to make sure that that skull cranium is as even as we can with the spine, just so we don't jam the top bones, joints in the neck, thus causing headaches, other symptoms that could go up to the head or down to the arms. Now, for the shoulders, if you're sleeping kind of like front side, how is that twisting your torso? Relatively from laying in a relaxed position versus standing up, the body will untwist to a certain extent. However, that is something that we want to reframe the best we can. Okay, if we're sleeping a little bit more on the side, where's the arm? Is it above the head arm? Is it sleeping like this? What is that doing and how is that lengthening all the tissues? So when you stand up, are we tilting on having a higher shoulder when you look in a mirror? Does it seem unsymmetrical? If so, let's bring our arm down to our side, not laying on the arm, but a little bit in front. Anywhere from, shoe, arm in front of your torso to up to straight in front of you. Anytime we get higher than that, we're lengthening tissues that we probably shouldn't be for longer periods of time. So that is certain positions that we want to focus on with the neck, upper back, shoulder. Try to pay attention to that in terms of the awareness style when you go to bed tonight. So go through the assessment, go through the biggest range of motion, both directions, especially shoulder, scapula. Do this about three times. If you have to take photos and do what I did in terms of comparison to the other video, take screenshots, link them together, compare. This is something for your awareness scale that we want to nitpick certain areas and how we can spend more time when we go through the circles on those areas, okay? So that is the game plan today. Pay attention to how you sleep, and we're going to see you on week three tomorrow. Woo!